Secondly, of the 1,000 companies that are deemed to be eligible to M for, for MSAP, and apologies if I missed this, what is the percentage that are foreign MNCs versus uh, local enterprises? And uh, lastly, I think when introducing MSEP, uh, the government has you know, previously taken the view that there will be no U-turns, you know, and, uh, and, and this must be made very clear to uh, the business uh, sector. So that's the introduction of MSEP, which is giving companies extra foreign worker quota, uh, amount to a U-turn in the government's foreign manpower policies, or will it, uh, how will the government manage the risk that it will be seen by the business sector as a U-turn or as a sign that possibly in the future the government will U-turn and sort of make some concessions onto uh, this uh, foreign manpower policy and therefore lessen the drive to increase productivity and uh, strengthen the Singapore core, which is the acknowledged uh, policy aim of the government. Now, with regards to MSEP, it is not a U-turn. I've said before, under condition one, we live in a rapidly evolving, rapidly disrupting world. Today, there are significant opportunities for our country to continue to boost our competitiveness um, and to grasp these opportunities internationally, continue to ensure that we not just maintain our hub status, but to move ahead and pull ahead. And at the same time, significant opportunities for us to be able to tap into the R&D segment for us to continue to pivot and transform ourselves. Hence, the MSEP scheme was conceived to capture this very, very tight space of the three specific economic priorities that I've shared very early on. So there is no U-turn. We continue to nudge. We continue to persuade our companies to automate. We continue to persuade our companies to up the productivity and to increase the value. Add. Getting, in, in our process of getting there, this is how we see we can help a very highly selected group of companies that we have been working with and we know that they are on the cusp of being able to, to, to make that significant pivot and to help just give them the uplift that's necessary. And hence, it is very tightly scripted between condition one and condition two. Now, I understand your, your um, apprehension, but on the other hand, you can see that within the house itself, you have got both sides. You have got members, fellow members of, of uh, parliamentarians who are asking, why can't we expand it even further? But we are saying that let's do this on a very tightly scripted and a very tightly, uh, uh, sort of very highly selective and differentiated scheme for these companies that can achieve. The second question is that you haven't answered uh, 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 our fellow member Leong's question on uh, whether it's a U-turn or not. Uh, you say you have to check the, uh, the past uh, uh, information, but if in the past there was 33% 30, 30, 30, uh, uh, kind of cap on the foreigners, then if you say that that is not necessarily the ratio now, that in fact is a U-turn, right? And uh, Mr. Leong, uh, Member Leong also asked about uh, what are the number of percentage of Singaporean-owned firms and, and within the 1,000 firms that you have uh, pointed out just now. Thank you. I thank Mr. Leong uh, for his question, but I think he probably did not capture the essence of what I was trying to tell him. Um, uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's strange because uh, on the one hand, I think uh, Mr. Leong, who asked the question, seemed to... to to not have uh, an issue. Now, just to set it into perspective, the 30% cap, that was not the context of how I address that there's no U-turn. Because Mr. Leon Pereira's point about the U-turn was whether this MSAP scheme subsequent would in terms of raising the, 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 the sub-DRC uh, numbers and also the work permit numbers above the prevailing quota appears to be a U-turn. So, for the record, we, for the one-third ratio, the 30% ratio, we will continue to monitor this very closely. But the MSET, because of the very 
highly selective nature of the scheme and because of the stringent criteria that we have applied for Condition 1 and Condition 2, we don't expect in a penultimate the numbers to affect the proportion significantly. Now, please remember, Mr Leong, the MSEP is here to help us generate more economic opportunities for Singaporeans. Because in the second condition, it is about making sure that there are more training opportunities for Singaporeans and the jobs for Singaporeans. So don't look at it in isolation. The first condition is about our hub status, about our investments in R&D, and about how we internationalise our operations. But the second condition, condition two, is about the employer employment and the employability of our locals and the training of our locals. So today, we live in a rapidly changing and rapidly disrupting world. So how we allocate, how nimble we are able to allocate our manpower resources, this will be critical to our success. Now, in terms of our commitments, we continue to track them. Our economic agencies also work with these companies under the program. And I think you got, maybe you were not paying attention to what I said. I said that there is a time limit to MSET. It is not indefinite. Thank you.